it's like heaven for the politician or bureaucrat because it's power without accountability. The reason why all the major political parties are massively in favour of Europe is because when their careers are blown out of the water here, they're stumbling around for a job. No commercial organisation is going to hire them. They know what a collection of shits they are, right? There's only one place that will hire them. They can get a job there, which gives them the freedom not to have to face the electorate. It's extremely well paid. It's more or less permanent. They don't have any constituents and they don't have any worry about being thrown out at elections. So they say, stay with the European project. I'll be making myself two, three hundred grand a year. It'll be fantastic. And at the end of it, I get a peerage. It's great. Since they're not directly accountable to the taxpaying public, EU politicians and bureaucrats have understandably been more than generous to themselves in pay and perks. If you're an EU official, there's the relocation allowance, the household allowance, the family allowance, the entertainment allowance, the private healthcare allowance, the private education for your kids allowance. The healthcare allowance includes free Viagra. You would have thought that would come under entertainment. If you're an MEP, you get an extra £250 a day for being good enough to turn up, another £41,000 a year on top of that to cover phone bills and computers, and another £225,000 a year on top of that to cover staffing costs, which in years gone by often meant spouse or children. And to cap it all, they've decided to charge themselves a special low rate of tax. This is the shopping centre. But this is all for politicians and bureaucrats, it's not for members of the public? No. So you get your own hair salon and your nail bar. Get your nails done. Your nails done. There's a sauna, there's a massage parlour as yep. well. Why would they not want to stay here living a life of luxury? There are a number of people here who are paid more than the British Prime Minister. Ah, oh, you might say, but how many? Four, ten, a hundred? Ten thousand. The European Union is very good at purchasing the loyalty of powerful and articulate interests in all the member states. When we hear great public institutions, quangos, museums and campaign groups, waxing lyrical about the EU, we have to remember the EU gives them vast amounts of our money. The EU gives shed loads of our money to local authorities and to universities and to art groups and opera companies. And that then provides this chorus of noise in favour of the European project. Every charity over a certain size is getting money from Brussels. Every NGO, we see EU largesse effectively buying opinion. You know what we see here is really a racket. It's become a, a very good way of taking money from the general population and handing it to people who are lucky enough to be working for the system. Would it help if you knew who they were? Because you don't have any power over them, so what's the point? In the EU, there's a thing called a parliament. But it's not a parliament as we know it. In the EU, the parliament isn't in charge. Have you ever known anyone know who their MEP is? Nobody does. It's because we know that they're not actually being voted into a meaningful position of lawmaking. This is the only parliament the world's ever invented where you cannot initiate legislation, propose legislation, or even the repeal of legislation. All of that comes from the unelected European Commission. So you can't propose a law and try and get it passed? No. Absolutely not. Parliamentary democracy, once every five years, you can throw everything out of the window and start again. With this, once something is European law, there is nothing through the democratic process the voter can do to change it. The people whom we elect to go to Brussels have almost no power at all. They do what they're told. Got even less power than the House of Lords, for goodness sake. Our votes for these people are pointless. They are fundamentally pointless. The European Parliament is an irrelevance. The European Union bureaucratic structures who are appointed, not elected, have all the real power.